from deep in the heart of the San Fernando Valley, it's Hanging with Dr. Z with Rusty Steel and the Steel Wheels. Tonight, Lorraine Newman. This monkey means business. The doctor will see you now. Hello! Whoa! What a, what a, hello! Stop it! Thank you very much, thank you guys. They're hyper. They threw too many starbursts into the crowd. Settle down. What a sugar high. What a great group. Good evening and welcome. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm, uh, this is Hanging with Dr. Z. I'm Dr. Z. And this is Rusty Steel and the Steel Wheels over here. Wonderful. How are you? I'm pretty good. How was your weekend? Oh, it was really fun. You had a good time? Yeah. I just, you know, looked in the mirror and, and uh, yeah, it was good. Made boiled hot dogs, you know, all the stuff I like doing. Nothing wrong with that. Put on the Weather Channel, eat a can of cream corn cold. Have <laughs> on TV. Love it. Yeah. Sure. You're still living at that hotel? Uh-huh. I know it was on fire. Did it all burn down? Not my half. Okay, great. You don't need the whole hotel. You're only in one room. Right. I had a big weekend. I took the kids to the circus. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I thought it was the circus. We went in, immediately got really sick. Turns out it was a house in the neighborhood being tented for bugs. <laughs> Do you like the circus? Though? Love the circus. I was born in a circus. You were born in a circus? I was, yeah. I, how do I not know this? I don't know. I how guess you never asked. Friend? Well, I don't normally ask people if they were born in a circus unless they have lobster hands. <laughs> we have an amazing episode tonight. One of my favorite people on the planet, Lorraine Newman, is here tonight. <laughs> From Saturday Night Live, the author of Maybe Live in Interesting Times, uh, so many stories. And then, back by popular demand, Ernest Borgnine is going to come out here and shoot himself into Martin Balsam from a slingshot. All that and more after these commercial messages. Rusty Steel and the Steel Wheels, take it away. Do you have trouble getting your kids to sleep? <laughs> Do they see monsters and goblins in the dark? It's time to chase those scaries away with the Jack Elam Magic Bedtime Projector by Deluxe Fuxley. Now children all over the world can sleep under the benevolent, healing gaze of character actor Jack Elam. Your kids will sleep better than ever to six different modes of Jack. Grumpy. Cantankerous. Loutish, surly, drunk, drunk too, and one more. Also available in Martin Balsam, Buddy Hackett, Lon Chaney Jr., and new alternating Claude Akins and Simon Oakland. Order the Jack Elam Magical Bedtime Projector for only $19.99. Send check or money order, or for free shipping, call 1-800-555-4652 before midnight tonight. Operators are standing by. Not available in North Dakota, Utah, or parts of southwestern Van Nuys. May cause insomnia, night terrors, panic attacks, and early onset alcoholism. <laughs> are back. Our first guest tonight is nothing shy of a television legend. She is, of course, known uh, from the legendary first cast of the show Saturday Night Live, which is a comedy program on another network. She has a wonderful book on Audible called May You Live in Interesting Times. You can hear her voice work in the upcoming Metalocalypse movie. Please welcome America's best friend, Lorraine Newman, is here. Hi, everybody. Now, your book, May You Live in Interesting Times, is on Audible only. That's right. Can your friends not read? What was the, what was the, uh, well, the justification I that? just left the dance with the guy that brung me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I um, do. I, I don't know what you mean, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it by Tab Hunter later, and he'll explain. <laughs> oh, Tab. I... Basically, it was that I had this uh, book that I wrote like 50,000 years ago, and I kept trying to rewrite it. I had nine drafts of it. So finally, Audible approached me, so then I had to really just do it. You get a point in your life, I guess, and you think it's time to put this all down. You know, I might do it. It's you should. A, yeah, 
I'm going to start it with pulling Alan Seuss face up out of the grotto, <laughs> circle all the way back, and then come back to it. I'm talking out of school, but I'll tell this quick. Back in the day, Playboy Mansion, uh, there was a contract dispute. Somebody didn't want to raise, and the house staff shop showing up for a couple of weeks, including the pool guy. So the grotto water wasn't getting filtrated. One night I get a call, 3, 4 in the morning from Hef. He's in a panic. There was so much, let's use the word, biological material. that once the water sat stagnant, the grotto started to grow its own James Conn. <laughs> Alan Seuss, amateur biophysicist, went over to help clean it up, was overcome, passed out. I pulled him face up out of the water. <laughs> Saved his life. But I'm not going to brag. That should go in your book, definitely. Probably. It's one of the smaller tales. You, you grew up in Beverly Hills. Yeah. You knew a lot of celebrities, like as a kid, mm -hmm. just kind of knick-knacking about. I was on Beverly Drive going into Nate and Al's, the best deli in Los Angeles. And for those of you who aren't Jewish, a deli is a place where you get cold cuts. Anyway, this was the 60s, and I was looking across the street, and I saw Danny Kaye. Sure. And he saw me see him, and he winked at me. So that's the interaction I one of had. The, one of the few women Danny winked at that day. <laughs> you must have some stories about people that would just put him away. Put who away? You know, them. Do you have any career enders? I heard a story that Candace Bergen, Edgar Bergen's daughter, he would carry Charlie McCarthy around the house. That's, like I've heard a person. that too. Yes. And, which does, because... Here's something that you never hear. You know, now that I've worked out all of my psychological bullshit, <laughs> I can concentrate on my ventriloquism. <laughs> so, so Candace Bergen grows up thinking that Charlie McCarthy is her brother. And then one day she opens up a closet door and there are five of her brothers hanging on a hook. Oh my God, that's got to throw you into therapy. But I did hear that it was his way of making passive aggressive remarks, you know, like at the dinner table. That's traumatizing. And that would lead to the healing power of shrieking. Yes. <laughs> I can't imagine anything else that would work. <laughs> You're in the groundlings, but I want to skip ahead. You end up in New York in the early 70s on the show SNL. Mm -hmm. This is the first cast, the first season, Lorne Michaels producing, and you're in Lorne Michaels' world. Did you ever feel, as a child of the 60s, that you would one day go to work desperate to avoid Paul Simon. <laughs> uh, wow. The guy could write a song about a blowjob and make it depressing. <laughs> he was ubiquitous. I mean, it was hard to avoid him. Yeah. He would pop up in the oddest places. He would snap, crackle, or pop up. He was just that little. I heard that he and Ben Shapiro sleep in shoeboxes filled with straw. God, why did you have to bring up Ben Shapiro? I'll cut it. Okay. But I do feel that Paul Simon, that he was just like, hey, Paul, I got a great joke. Knock, knock. A lot of people are homeless. Okay, great. <laughs> He's like a, a bummer. Well, I could be wrong. You knew him better than I did. I mean, you know, you could be at a dinner and um, he would stand on a chair and sing Feeling Groovy. That was a fun moment. I thought he would stand on the chair to make it look like he was sitting with everybody else. Yeah, that's, a, that's a short man joke, That's right? a short man joke. Okay. <laughs> and that's why she, that, are you watching? <laughs> Do you see what just happened? I made a joke. She goes, that's a short man joke. She commented on the joke, making it a joke of her own. It's more meta than anything Christopher Nolan could come up with on his best day. And that's why this woman should be on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> oh, and Rusty has a question. Go ahead. I do have a question uh, for Lorraine. What's Sandy Duncan really like? Um, she's a total cunt. That's cool. I tell you. You know me, I like to make friends. I like people. That's my crime. Yeah. <laughs> Sue me. Usually when I meet people, I like to give them a gift. So I usually have a large bag, mostly things like binoculars, viewmasters. How quaint. Yeah, I gave a viewmaster to Sandy Duncan, threw it back in my face. Oh, honey. Go around the corner, who do I bump into? Peter Falk. Hey, Peter, how you doing? Reach in, binoculars. Throws it to the ground. You gotta read the room. Then I, hey man, turn around, Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy, do I have a gift for you? No. You're a snake bit. Car pulls up, beeps the horn. I look in, it's the Cyclops from the Seventh Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Was Ray Harryhausen sitting with him? He was, Ray was sitting with him, and Forey Ackerman was in the back seat with a young Heidi Saha. Oh. And the Cyclops, who knows how to be polite, at least picked up the Viewmaster and just went like this. Like, just, well, he's a people pleaser. He's a, pe he's a people pleaser. Him. You're known to be such a skilled improviser, and I wanted to talk to you about it, but we didn't have time to go over it ahead of time. Right. So I was afraid to go into it cold. But you've really done a wonderful job. You're a horror movie fan. We've talked about Very this. Very much so, yes. What was scarier to you in the early 70s? Night Gallery or Rod Serling's hair when he hosted the Night Gallery? God, oh, that is such a tough question. Um, I'm going to throw three names at you. Okay. Warren Zevon. Mm -hmm. Toby Hooper. Mm -hmm. Mark Mothersbaugh. Mm -hmm. You knew and or dated these two people. I dated Mark. I did not date Toby. And who was the third person? Warren Zevon. I dated Warren. Were there any myopic 80s weirdos that you didn't hang out with? Not 80s, but um, I did have a really long-term relationship with Arnold Stang. Well put. Because that guy, if Wally, irresistible. if Wally Cox was out with Marlon, Arnold's phone rang off the hook. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. You get those two together and all you need is snap and you can have a delightful bowl of Rice Krispies. <laughs> and I'm just going to tell you right now, if you can find another show that drops Arnold Stang references so willy-nilly, why don't you go fucking find it? <laughs> this interview has been like a cup of scope in the mouth of my day. Okay. I feel tingly and refreshed. The film Thank is Metalocalypse. The book is May You Live an Interesting Time. The woman, the institution, is Lorraine Newman. And that's the name of that tune. We'll be right back with Shirley Chisholm. She's going to talk about the first female presidency women's reproductive rights, and several other things that will never happen. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Z. Yeah.